Peter. They're broke too. <laughs> Doc, well, attorney Spurman, go ahead. Like, it, it, it's not all the sisters that are on welfare. You have a lot of working mothers who also go for child support. I think the bigger issue here, Tammy, is we have a broken community because black people have no business going to the white man to ask him to oh. reconcile family oh. issues. Absolutely. That is the crux Absolutely. of the oh. right oh. You're telling me that we're going back to the same man who has historically stolen our kids, sold our kids, beat our kids, destroyed the black family. You mean to tell me we get out of slavery only to run back to Massa and say, Massa, can you serve as a conduit between me and the mother of our child? Can you tell me how much time I can spend with my child? Can you tell him how much money he should spend with his child? As far as I'm concerned, the child support system is a symptom. The problem is the broken black community where we can lay down to make babies, but we can't stand up together to take care of them. Woo, family you advocate know, mediation support says you know, yeah. And he needed to make sure that there would be enough inmates to fill those prisons. The child support system is not about taking care of children. The child support system is about incriminating the poorest element of African-American males who are living on less than $10,000 a year and then punishing them for not being able to make a payment that in all reality, they will not be able to make. Narice okay. Cox said, so what's your suggestion, Dr. Umar? My suggestion for? I think she's referring to, um, in, in terms of the child support, what's your suggestion for a woman receiving child support. But I think attorney Sperling had a rather good suggestion, which was equal custody and equal pay. What are your thoughts on that, Dr. Umar? I definitely like the idea of equal custody and equal pay. We also need to keep in mind that when it comes to black men, there's two different groups, uh, if you would, economically within the child support system. You have the professional black men, and then you have your brothers who are working class and also impoverished. And it is the brothers who are working class and impoverished that we are most concerned about. Of course, the professional black man can pay his child support, but what about the brother with a prison record, two or three strikes on his name, a GED, a high school diploma. And even if he wants to improve himself economically, he has a felony on his record that doesn't allow him to access the federal grants. He can't access the student loans. He's trapped. What about him? Why are we expecting men who can barely care for themselves to be able to pay child support for the child? And, all, and, and, and the other thing, we have to look at support as broader than just a financial contribution. It bothers me that we limit support to a financial contribution. He can be the babysitter. He can take them to school. He can be the aftercare provider. There's so many other ways that a father can support his child as opposed to just giving out money to the mother. You know, that's an interesting thought because I always say, <clears throat> I always say <laughs> that uh, men, men, men don't mind supporting women as long as they're sleeping with them. And then when they're not sleeping with her, they ain't really trying to support them anymore. But women, I, now I'm thinking about women. Women don't mind uh, bearing the load when, when they're sleeping with a man. They don't mind if he doesn't have a job. They don't mind if he doesn't pay the bills. Many, you know, there are women who will take a man at his worst. Please, are, Dr. Omar. So, okay. Yes, I think that, I think both gentlemen are right. The elder and the attorney. The issue is we have to keep in mind that a lot of the black men we're talking about are working poor. So they cannot pay that $5,000 retainer for the, for the paternity fee. We also have to recognize that the child support system itself is financially exploitative. There are fees associated with everything you do. If you're late with your payment, there's an interest rate there. There's an interest payment that has to be made. If you want to file a modification, that costs money. 
There is money associated with every single thing you do. So if you have a young father working poor who can barely make his monthly payment to begin with, and then on top of that, he's going to be bereft with a whole bunch of different fees for everything he wants to do to modify and improve the custody or the child support situation, it's going to be very tough for him. The system is unfair. That's why a lot of them have trouble staying in it. A lot of fathers will go. And once they see how unfair the system is, that's when they start checking out because there's not a lot of justice in the child support system. And the black community stakeholders, such as our politicians, our preachers, our community-based organizations, they're not saying enough about this because the radical black feminist movement has made people afraid to speak up for black fathers who are being crushed under the child support weight because you will be branded as someone who is soft on fathers who don't want to be responsible. And that's not correct. The true narrative is most fathers want to take care of their children, but you have a system that will call you a criminal if you can't, if you can't take care of your child, but that same system won't give you a job so you can do so. I want to re I want to reach into our soulmate comments real quick because it is flooded, fellas. It is flooded. Maya K is through the roof. She is so angry. I have to address her. My children's father doesn't pay his child support, <laughs> nor does he pay health insurance. So what about those men? Well, he shouldn't have children if he can't care for them. She says he still has to step up and take care of his responsibility. So the mother's supposed to. A pull the financial weight. These men sound crazy, she says. Uh, Maya is on a roll here, but there are several people who are on a roll. Maya, I want to first share with you that no, I don't believe, and fellas, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't believe that anyone on this panel, nor I, believe that men should not be responsible for their children. That is not what this show is about. Absolutely. This show is about Absolutely how the system of child support in America affects and impacts black fathers from being their best, to be quite frank. Uh, I'm sorry, and it's unfortunate uh, that the man you chose to have your child with is, has not been the man who has stepped up to the plate. Um, that's an un unfortunate decision that, ha that has happened. And it sounds like you're going to bear the responsibility up until the child becomes an adult. That's unfortunate too. But that's not what this show is about. It's about the impact of those fathers. We all think that the brother should be responsible for, for the child he bared with you. Uh, is anybody disagree with that? No, just so you hear from a black man, we all think that we, uh, if you have a child, you need to be responsible for that mentally, physically, uh, financially, um, emotionally, spiritually, you need to raise that child. And a lot of us do raise that child. We're just talking about a system. Let me go back to another soulmate. Keith uh, says, why are these black fathers broke? And if he's broke, should he reconsider having kids? Well, I, I, I would imagine the, the part of that is it's not I guess, unfortunately, or fortunately for me, and fortunately for me, it is not a man's decision, typically, whether a woman decides to have the child or not. Well, also, we have to be careful with that type of a conversation okay. that says you should not be having children if you can't afford them, because there's people in this country who would love for the Black community to endorse that sort of a circumstance, because that would basically mean that a lot of fathers would not be able to reproduce because they don't have the economic wherewithal to provide for those children. We are not God. And we have to be very careful about telling people that they can't reproduce if they can afford. Because if that's the case, then America can simply create a situation where Black fathers won't be able to afford and then nobody will be reproducing. Let us be clear. This country has been trying to reduce our numbers since we got here. So we have to make sure that as we have these conversations about child support and custody, that we don't feed into a racist narrative that says we should voluntarily stop reproducing ourselves. Yeah, I think the Evans family did a good job. Uh, Logic Wins says to my Maya K, well, I assume you knew his financial situation when you slept with him. Why is his situation <laughs> a problem that's what family law judges say all the time. When women come down and complain about 
oh, he's not paying his child support. Well, you knew he had two other children by two other women when you got pregnant with him, didn't you? That every man who has a child should be responsible for their child. And each one of the panelists has agreed. What this conversation is about is about how the child support system impacts our black fathers. And do we really want to put our hands, the hands of our child's father, the hands of our children, because ladies, a lot of us have men, you know, a lot of us have boys who will become men someday. Do we really want to put them inside of a system that is known for ruining the black family? That's what this conversation is about. Now, whether your daddy, your, your baby daddy pay child support or not, we ain't got nothing to do with that decision you made. That's not what we're talking about today, but I will ladies, I will have a ladies edition of child support as well. But this one, we are being educated about what the child support system does to black fathers. Uh, Big Slim says, my brother is 35 and, well, uh, and still scared to get a chick pregnant. He's a unicorn. <laughs> He's <laughs> 35 too, and he ain't got nobody pregnant yet either. <laughs> uh, you do what the judge tells you to do, or you go to jail, says Tyler Durden. And then Family Advocate Mediation Support says, absolutely not the narrative for any group for father. I'm not sure what that meant. Um, I do want to talk about, we were talking about celebrities and Tyrese. Dr. Umar, I want you to give us your thoughts on Tyrese's ex-wife, asking or presenting a $20,000 a month child support payment? Um, it's tough. And Tyrese is a buddy of mine. He and I, we talk from time to time. Um, I wouldn't want to speak on a specific situation. On the surface, it does appear excessive. Um, it is my hope that the two of them will be able to work something out that works for the best that works in the best interest of the child and for both of them. And to be honest with you, Tammy, that is really the problem. It's not about whether the child, whether the father can pay money or whether he's unemployed. It's about why we can't sit down and have a conversation that Later. is focused on the best interest of the child as Preach. opposed to trying to destroy each other. I think one of the cruxes of this situation is unhealthy men and unhealthy women irregardless of education, irregardless of income, they are coming together, producing children. And when they don't get what they want out of each other, they then make it up in their minds that they're going to do whatever they can to destroy the other person. And they don't mind destroying their child's relationship with that other parent in the process. Mm. So, so who's doing, uh, so who's uh, doing more damage to the child? That sounds like the mother is doing more damage to the child than the father is actually doing because he has to go I think it takes two to tango. I think it takes two to tango. It takes two to tango. Wait, wait, wait. It takes two. I understand that, but let me complete my thought. Go ahead. Go ahead, Reginald. Just like Dr. Omar said, but yet she's taking me to court in order for me to be a part of my child's life. I have to deal with the court system. She's taking me to court. Yes, we can sit down and talk, but yet if she's taking me to the court system, let's even with Tyrese, I want twenty thousand dollars. Versus, what do you want to, what do you want to do, or how you want to be a parent to our child? Because that's how it's set up. Because it's like the system is set up to beat me up. I have to fight. I have to fight with the court system and the mother because it's the mother who's denying the father access to his own children. Not the system itself, because that's what happens when we as fathers got to go to court. And the only thing that you want to talk about is child support. I have more to offer to my kid. Dr. Omar, over $150 billion, billion dollars is owed to the government and back child support and associated fees, mostly by Black fathers. What are your thoughts on that? And not only by Black fathers, but Black fathers who have to exist on an annual income of $10,000 or less. Again, I want to underscore the fact that the child support system is designed to crush the people who are most unable to meet the monthly obligation. It is in, it's further impoverishing Black men who are already impoverished. It's incarcerating them. It's separating them from their children. 
It is eroding the trust in the black community between black men and black women. As some of the brothers said earlier, our marriage rates are going to be even worse than they are now in the next 10 to 20 years because child support has become such a major contextual variable within the dating game that a lot of men, young men, I speak on college campuses quite a bit and they're telling me, Dr. Umar, I'm not getting married because I've seen how men have been mistreated and exploited and taken advantage of in the child support system. And not only do black men have to speak up about this issue, black women do as well because a lot of very good black women who would never take financial advantage of their child's father are sitting by watching their sisters do it, watching their aunts do it, watching their cousins and best friends do it. And as Dr. King said, we are in greater peril, not from the people who do evil, but from the ones who watch it and don't speak up. Black women need to start speaking up about other black women who are taking advantage of the system. Well, I'm glad I could be one of them tonight. Tyler Dorden, our soulmate says, over $150 trillion is owed to the black man by the government. Whoop, boo, y'all.